Hello, I'm Dr. Joe Parisi. It is very difficult to put into words the thoughts and emotions we feel when we think of the men and women in uniform. Their patriotism carries a high price. Freedom is not free. Great sacrifices were made to achieve it, and many more have been made by virtually every generation of Americans to maintain it. I think that is something we need to remember, that the freedoms we enjoy cannot be taken for granted. America does not have a great military to make war. Rather, we have one to preserve and protect our liberties, our country, and everything we hold dear. The young men and women who serve our country are our sons and daughters. They and their families make great sacrifices, especially during the long deployments overseas. They have our fervent hopes that they accomplish their missions and return safely to us. To all of our servicemen and women, and to all of your families, I offer my profound thanks. It's not science fiction, it's now. This is today's Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps. Together, they're the most advanced fighting force on the planet and beyond. The biggest advantage in combat has always been to be able to see your enemy before he sees you. Today, that means orbiting surveillance satellites capable of reading the license number on a vehicle 500 miles below. Or goggles that can amplify the light of a star thousands of times and turn Orbiting night us. into day. Tight formation coming in. It means a pilot sitting in a control room in New Mexico can track down an enemy on the other side of the world and if necessary, lock up target five, eliminate them. Two, one, impact. New technologies have enormously enhanced our ability to see the enemy first. But these are all just extensions of the human eye. And they are all subject to its limitations. Right now, 45% of everyone in the Air Force is nearsighted and needs corrective lenses in order to do their job. It's perfect. Colonel Charles Riley is an ophthalmic surgeon and consultant to the Air Force Surgeon General for Refractive Surgery. We're looking at enhancing the human weapon system. Over the past decade, Dr. Riley and other military surgeons have been using laser vision correction to enhance the vision of hundreds of thousands of soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Uh, we talk about upgrading our avionics in an airplane so they can see out further, see the bad guys sooner. Well, that's what we're doing with our laser for the human weapon system. The most important weapon system in the cockpit is that human. And so to be able to offer them that upgrade in their avionics is priceless. It really is priceless. It may mean the, the difference between them living or dying in, in their job. It, it's, it's that big. Commander Elizabeth Hoffmeister is a Navy flight surgeon. She was involved in some of the original studies that led to the military's approval of laser refractive surgery. In the military, we do not consider LASIK to be a cosmetic procedure at all. It is truly um, a warfighter, almost uh, like a, a gear issue. When we send a soldier off for deployment, that's one of the things that we as commanders have to do. We have to make sure that they are well trained, well equipped. If we can make him better and he is qualified for corrective surgery for his eyes, let's do it. General Frank Helmick is commanding general of the Army's 18th Airborne, the Rapid Deployment Force, and the deputy commanding general of U.S. forces in Iraq. 
He's had LASIK surgery himself. And our military has an advantage over our adversaries on almost everything, I think. And LASIK surgery is just another indication of that. LASIK was approved by the FDA for refractive surgery in 1998. But it was more than a decade before the procedure was accepted by the military for aviators. It wasn't a question of effectiveness. In the civilian world, LASIK had amassed a long and enviable track record for safety and consistently good vision correction. If something performs well in suburban America, that may not perform well in the middle of the heat in Afghanistan, it may not perform well at 25,000 feet jumping out of a plane, it may not perform well under water with explosives and concussive effects with the water, which is not necessarily something that's tested very well on the, on the civilian side. Colonel Scott Barnes, an Army ophthalmic surgeon, was intrigued by the potential for the Army Special Forces. He began testing laser refractive surgery under extreme conditions with soldiers at the Special Operations Command at Fort Bragg. I want to make sure that I know that I've, I've given him the best opportunity, that we as the Army have given him the best opportunity. And unless we've done that study ourselves, I mean, it's kind of Ronald Reagan's uh, mantra of trust but verify. We believe that most of those things are probably correct. We just want to see it for ourselves. I was pleasantly surprised. Mm, pleasant is perhaps not a strong enough word. Um, it was amazing how well uh, folks did uh, that, that in all the environmental studies that we looked at. Dr. Steve Shalhorn is considered to be the founder of the military's refractive surgery program. As a former Navy Top Gun pilot, instructor, and ophthalmologist, Shalhorn was in an ideal position to see the potential and the problems. Before we'd even considered doing something that could affect their vision, we want to make sure that procedure is safe and effective. It's in all of our interest to do that. And that's why we spent years and years, study after study, looking at how safe and effective this is in the environment that our folks have to go into. He spent nearly 10 years putting laser eye surgery through every test he could come up with. We looked at performance before and after we did laser vision correction. And what did we find? Better performance after laser vision correction. Well, better is a good thing. And that's why I was like, dude, this is pretty darn awesome. And all the studies lined up very similar to that. The results that we've been seeing with our aviation uh, study have been, have been phenomenal. Captain David Tenzer, also a Navy eye surgeon, worked with Shalhorn on a number of studies, concentrating on naval aviators. In 2004, he began testing wavefront analysis, a new diagnostic technology. Wavefront could identify the slightest flaws in the eye's optics, and then guide a laser to correct each of those defects. With the addition of wavefront analysis, Captain Tanzer and other military researchers found LASIK could routinely produce supervision well beyond what's considered normal. It's not 2020, it's not even 2016, it's 2012. It's two lines better than 2020. 92% are 2012 or better uncorrected, and 35% are 2010. They max out our eye chart. In 2006, after nearly 14 years of countless studies, tests, and trials, Steve Shalhorn was finally satisfied. Looks good, Paul. Looks real good. On that point, then we said, this is, this is good enough for aviators now. We had done the environmental studies. We had obviously in very intense, many studies looking at this quality vision aspect, looking at modern technology. Uh, and then we decided it's good enough for aviators. At that point, we started, we started LASIK in aviation. That opened the door for LASIK in space. NASA, which until then had banned any type of refractive surgery, approved LASIK for their astronauts. And that represents a real milestone. NASA looked at the safety and effectiveness of LASIK in great detail over the years, and they have deemed it safe and effective for use in their astronauts. We should take great comfort in that, um, in knowing that it has reached that level.